And Dr. Parkins, I am going to hand things over to you to spend some time talking us through how this type of surveillance works and how folks at home can utilize this data in their region to monitor levels of COVID-19 close to their home. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, uh, again, I've already acknowledged that uh, um, I'm one of several uh, wastewater experts uh, pursuing COVID-19 modeling within uh, Calgary and uh, Alberta at large. What's important is most of us uh, at the start of the pandemic did not have uh, the skill set to do this all on our own. And we partnered in Calgary with members of the faculties of science, engineering and medicine, um, and more recently bioinformatics to be able to uh, rapidly develop this technology and apply it to a real world situation. This is science in action. Next slide, please. Um, so what is wastewater-based epidemiology? Well, it's a field oh, it's a field of science that analyzes analytes in population, different chemicals, different molecular signatures in order to better understand the population at large that uh, contributes to the wastewater. Uh, so it, the analogy is drawing blood from a host to understand the health of the human host by looking at blood. The difference from a human person uh, to a wastewater network is within the wastewater network, you can move in on a more and more granular scale by sampling um, strategically through the nodal network of sewer sheds. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what's most important about uh, wastewater-based epidemiology is it's a comprehensive technology capturing all members of society that contribute to the wastewater network and by its very nature is inclusive and does not exclude um, marginalized populations it captures everybody in the society and it is an objective unbiased mechanism by which to measure the burden of each particular analyte in a population next slide please so why covid19 um, modeling through wastewater well the very fact is that SARS-CoV-2 RNA, remnants of the virus, are shed into the feces of infected individuals. And by uh, measuring wastewater from communities, we can look at the burden of RNA remnants in the wastewater to understand how it correlates with clinical cases. Uh, what's important is wastewater captures everybody with COVID-19, those with symptoms and those without, um, and those who can get tested and those who cannot. Uh, again, the adage, everyone poops, and with wastewater-based epidemiology, we can capture all of this and understand the dynamics in a population. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a quick workflow of how we do the um, wastewater analysis in Calgary. It's a little bit different in every other site, um, which is uh, the result of each group developing sample uh, processing methodologies in real time. and a limited uh, supply chain in terms of getting access. So we all had to figure things out on our own and validate different steps. Um, next slide. Uh, sample collection is obviously the first step. And what we uh, rely on is the collection of composite wastewater. Uh, composite wastewater uh, allows for the continuous collection of small amounts of wastewater through a 24 hour cycle, recognizing that most individuals um, have a diurnal pattern of water usage um, and toileting pattern. So to understand an entire population, we wanna capture that entire 24 hour period. The program I'm gonna to talk to you about right now is our wastewater monitoring program, specifically at wastewater treatment plants through large municipalities in Alberta. But we have wastewater monitoring programs in hospitals, uh, all major hospitals in Calgary, uh, and increasingly a couple in Edmonton. Uh, we've had them in schools, we've had them in campuses and dorms, correctional facilities, shelters. Uh, we've been through the sewer shed in Calgary, uh, looking at up to eight different uh, neighborhoods, capturing about 24% of the population um, and in um, First Nations communities. And for each of these sampling strategies, we use a different type of auto sampler, whether it's this large industrial one that you'll see that's that tube being lowered into a manhole or a small uh, pelican case type uh, device that's been designed for in-facility monitoring by a local Alberta company, CEC Analytics. Next slide, please. Uh, once samples are collected, uh, we rely on um, uh, a logistic network that exists through 
um, standard uh, transport companies to get samples to us here in Calgary in rapid time on ice such that there's no sample degradation. And then we use what's called a 4S mechanism by which to um, purify the wastewater sample of impurities uh, and remove factors that inhibit molecular signature detection uh, and to concentrate the wastewater. We spike each sample with an internal control so we can look to see if there are inhibitors present. And we can also look at other factors within the wastewater to try and normalize that signal. Although increasingly we find that uh, efforts to normalize don't actually correlate better with outcomes. Next slide, please. Uh, we look at a number of molecular targets. Uh, we look at two regions within the nucleocapsid gene of uh, SARS-CoV-2, N1 and N2. This would be similar to looking at a left sock and a right sock. Uh, in the past, we've looked at the envelope gene, although it's less sensitive. Um, the agent that we spike into our wastewater that we then measure is the uh, uh, bovine coronavirus, which is a vaccine that we can use. And we, again, use that as an internal control to make sure that there's no inhibitors present. Um, and other internal controls intrinsic to those samples, including the pepper mild model virus, as well as a few other bacterial factors that in theory allow us to correlate back to fecal burden in wastewater. In practice, that seems to be less so, but again, this is science in action. Next slide, please. Um, and then we go through a process of uh, data reporting uh, and where that act, uh, data is actioned. So, um, uh, the screen capture here uh, is of the CSM uh, COVID tracker uh, produced through the Center for Health Informatics here at the University of Calgary, courtesy of Tyler Williamson and his group. And if you click on that, it should take us to the website in real time. Not sure if you can click on that link there, uh, Michelle. Maybe Chad? not. Chad? Well, I, ca I can't, but Chad probably can. But if not, I actually also happen to have the website up as well. Because, oh, there we go. Chad made it happen because I was going to ask you a couple questions about it myself. Um, okay. There you go. Click on that top box there. And then the wastewater tab, it's the fourth one over. All right, and so here we see uh, a schematic uh, for uh, the city of Calgary. Um, you can see underneath the map that Calgary really has three wastewater treatment plants. It's the only uh, municipality in Alberta that is serviced by three wastewater treatment plants, uh, one in the north uh, and two in the south that share the combined minority of wastewater in the city of Calgary. We, by flow weighting, uh, the signal that we measure at each site based on the amount of flow of wastewater that's received at each site, we can come up with a, a single composite value. And what you can see here is the N1 value reported over time through the second, third, fourth, and now a uh, massive fifth wave of COVID-19, which you can see we're on the downward trend of, and that's been consistent for a significant period of time. You can see by moving over to the top left, that what's reported here is N1. And if you click, you can go to N2. And this is measuring your left sock and your right sock and see that they uh, correlate very strongly or an average of the two. Um, and then you can see we're reporting uh, the rolling average, which is a, a new method by which we've tried to display the data to try and remove focus on any individual data point, but rather to understand um, trends over time because recognizing Wastewater is a terribly complex and heterogeneous matrix, uh, and there is bound to be sample to sample variation. So if you go to exact, you'll see it, it bounces around a little bit more and it looks a little more sawtooth. So this is Calgary. You can click on Edmonton next, and you'll see that um, Edmonton has had, a, uh, if we click on rolling average again as well, just to be consistent between them, you can see the second, third, fourth, uh, and, and fifth wave. And, Edmonton seems to be declining at even faster rate than what we've observed in Calgary. Uh, the decline is certainly encouraging. It's been consistent over time at large municipalities, but smaller centers. So if you click over on Drumheller, you'll see that that's not occurring. Okotoks and Lethbridge, 
you'll see that um, different period, different places uh, uh, across the province are at different periods within the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Large cities peaked faster and are starting to decline faster. In the smaller centres, that trend is slower. So again, um, what we're seeing is a consistent trend in larger centres towards declining COVID-19 uh, uh, community cases as measured by SARS-CoV-2 wastewater RNA. Next slide, please. Um, what we've been able to do is correlate our wastewater values with clinically diagnosed cases. And this is the city of Calgary. Um, we've looked at this across uh, municipalities and generally our uh, R squared correlation is between 0.85 and 0.89. So it's a very strong correlation between wastewater diagnosed cases, or um, sorry, wastewater diagnosed predicted cases, and those are clinically observed using um, cases that were reported to Alberta Health Services in a rolling five-day average. So what we've seen here, um, or what we've plotted here, are those cases that are reported to Alberta Health Services in blue. And you can see that through the second, third, fourth, and fifth wave. And what you can see here in red are the top 95% and bottom 95% bands of what we would predict the number of cases to be that are benchmarked against Alberta Health Services diagnosed cases. And what's important is that wastewater provides a leading indicator to cases. So wastewater best correlates with cases that are to be diagnosed six days in the future. So here, the wastewater that's been collected is used to predict those cases that are occurring six days in the future and are measured against that. And you can see we've had very strong correlations through waves two, three, four, where it started to have uh, um, uh, fewer clinically diagnosed cases and, and wave five here as well. Um, so again, we see a very strong correlation over time and why this technology is so important at a time in which we have um, a lot more cases, limited access to um, confirmed PCR-based uh, testing and more reliance on rapid tests and not a mechanism by which to capture those as well and, and accurately. So wastewater certainly now is the gold standard by which to measure COVID-19 community burden um, and probably has been all along. Importantly, our benchmark has always been against confirmed clinical cases and those have never captured all cases in a population. Next slide, please. Um, we can detect uh, uh, changes in Omicron prevalence over time looking at wastewater. So here's um, a, a quick uh, presentation of how we've done that here using a drop qPCR assay where we look for um, a specific uh, mutation associated with the deletion that's present in the Omicron variant and not present in Delta. Um, and we can see how the proportion of Omicron to Delta changed very rapidly across municipalities uh, through mid-December, uh, occurring first uh, in Calgary um, and Banff and later in other areas of Alberta, including um, Edmonton, which followed slightly later, but it's been the smaller communities that have been taken a, a longer time to change over to Omicron. Uh, this isn't always possible uh, following the change from Alpha uh, to uh, uh, Delta was, was a challenge. And we weren't able to do it just based on the molecular biology of the, the viruses. Next slide, please. Um, our team in Calgary is massive. My two co-leads are Kevin Frankowski on the left, uh, Casey Hubert in the middle. Um, and then we've got uh, the rest of our entire team, including towards the bottom, our Center for Health Informatics, the folks that post the data in real time and help us to make it uh, usable to the public, as well as our Alberta Health funders and partners. Um, and then my colleagues uh, at the University of Alberta at the very bottom, Lily Pang, Benita Lee, and Steve Rudy. That's it for my formal presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions.